So today I'm going to talk about, um, this is the second part obviously from what we talked the other day, we started talking about shielding and clearing energies and how if you have worked as a light healer or some massage therapist or you've done energy work, polarity, um, you're a channeler, you might have experienced some things while you're uh, treating your clients or patients. Um, it is really important we talk about protecting yourself, but I wanted to talk to you about more than what's going on um, underneath. What what are the energetic fields? And talk a little bit about the vibrations of light and sound. So when I first was studying about this, of course, I didn't study from the point of a light worker or a channeler or even a healer. I started learning about vibrations of light and sounds because... Um, I work as a physicist um, for NASA. I work for, um, you know, different organizations, Department of Defense, different laboratories in New Mexico, doing work on airplanes or vibrations of sound and materials, things like that. So uh, believe me when I tell you that normally what I have learned, I have learned from a completely logical standpoint. I didn't learn it from this. Now, when I started learning about massage therapy, even though they don't teach you new age stuff per se, uh, they do talk to you about a little bit about the chakras, but they kind of mention it. Um, and I think they don't want to turn people off because 90, I'll say 90% of the people that get into massage therapy, they might have be Christian or they might have other, you know, uh, beliefs that contradict what um what we know it is you know knowledge that has passed down through chinese medicine hindu medicine um that it has been this this knowledge is more than five thousand years old however it has been kind of like um hidden um, um putting put pop culture as a phenomenon that is not true as a pseudoscience um, it has been a lot of disinformation about it. So today I just wanted to talk just briefly about how to protect yourself. So here you have a picture of a human being, obviously, and um, there's something called Kirlian photography. And Kirlian photography has shown together with biofeedback, and you can you can uh, search more about these two techniques. Um, we have instrumentation now that can detect very significantly the levels of the aura or energy or color vibration coming from a person from the different chakra centers um, now we are actually using something called biofeedback to for people that suffer from fibromyalgia um, you know insomnia um, autism a lot of, you know, things that want to go into surgery and want to, like, uh, find more peace, people that have psychological disorders. There's so many things that that they're using biofeedback and clearly in photography to help these patients or these clients. Now, none of this, obviously, is talked about in allopathic medicine, what, what we call traditional medicine. However, each one of us in the world is made of both measurable and subtle fields that create and sustain life. So measurable fields are called veritable fields. Veritas means truth, right? And subtle fields are named putative fields. Classically, a field is an area in which a force exerts an influence at every point. Like all energetic structures, a field involves the vibration of energy that can carry information. Fields operate on both physical and subtle planes and also energy bodies and channels, but fields present mysterious phenomena as well. Albert Einstein believed that the universe is composed of interconnected force fields and recent physicists have pinpointed some of these fields as constructs of finite reality held within a greater infinity. And you probably have heard about Haramein, and about the flower of life. And Haramein is a very known physicist. You can also search for his name uh, and watch some of the videos that they're doing. Because of fields, reality is both local, 
where is here and now, and non-local, occurring elsewhere and at other times. This means that everything across time and space is interconnected. All fields interact, creating both beneficial and harmful effects on living organisms. So what that means, and, and this has also been measured in Hertz, um, each one of us have all these chakras. Um, for example, a person's heart chakra energy extends up to three feet from it. So if you're standing in, in front of a person and next to another person, their heart chakra is connecting with that energy to you and you are connecting with the heart chakra at the same time. So that means that you're receiving and you're sending at the same time. Um, the primary difference between the physical and the subtle fields is often the simply the speed of the information and vibration involved. Sometimes um, we call this as humans feelings. You know, when you meet somebody for the first time, then you kind of have the gut feeling about that person. All of that is because you're picking up their energy into your field. So fields exist everywhere. Each one of us produces countless energy fields and interacts with endless numbers of external fields, both measurable and subtle, both emanating from every cell, organ, and organ system, as well as from the entirety of our bodies. The same statement can be made in relation to all other living beings on this planet. And that includes, and this is very, um, you know, it's amazing that we know this, but it has been it has been known that horses, for example, are much more sensitive than cats and dogs uh, to the human feel, and they can respond better. So the same statement can be made in relation to all living be beings. So in fact, the Earth itself and other planetary objects emit fields. Even inanimate objects, even a rock emits a field, an energy, especially if a human has picked it up. There is also an energy, and um, I found really amazing that um, it is known now that if you, let's say that you go to a Starbucks to have a coffee, and you sit down on a chair, and uh, you stay there for 30 minutes, drink your coffee, and leave, your energy field will be there for the next 30 to in order to better understand the complexity of fields, it's helpful to understand that there are three basic types, all of which are featured in this video. For example, physical fields, number one, also called veritable or miserable fields. Subtle fields, also called putative, representing fields that we are still learning how to measure, although we, we know that we can measure uh, with Kirlian photography and biofeedback, for example. Auric fields, which can be measured also with Kirlian photography at this time, and which are subtle energy layers that emanate from and surround the body. So let's talk about the physical fields first, the veritable fields that we can measure. We are made of innumerable fields, all of which interact to shape, direct, and form our lives. So the veritable or measurable energy fields are physical in nature and they include sound and electromagnetic forces, such as visible light, magnetism, monochromatic radiation, and rays from the electromagnetic spectrum, also called light. Our body produces or is affected by all of these energies. The chief field that generates and perpetuates life is called the electromagnetic spectrum, what we also call light. The other, Life sustaining category is the sound fields, also called sound or sonic waves. Each part of the electromagnetic spectrum manifests as radiation that vibrates at a specific rate and therefore is called electromagnetic radiation. Our bodies require a specific amount of each part of this spectrum for optimal physical, emotional, and mental health. 
We can become ill or imbalanced if exposed to too much or too little of any particular stratum from the spectrum. So yes, we are made out of light. Electromagnetic radiation is described as the stream of photons, the wave particles that are the basis of light. There are seven main types of electromagnetic radiation, each of which varies in wavelength, frequency, and energy. Low energy and high energy simply describe the information or energy of the photons measured in electron volts. Wavelength is a measure or a way to measure the distance between two points in a wave. Frequency is the number of times wave cycle per unit of time. The basic premise of physical electromagnetism is this. Electri electricity generates magnetism. The most classical understandings depend on the fact that when electricity or charged electrons flow in a current, they create a magnetic field. These forces of electricity and magnetism together form electromagnetism. The reverse is also true. A changing magnetic field can create an electrical field. Sound waves are the other major type of measurable wave. They are considered mechanical waves. Sound waves affect human beings and emanate from us. Do you know that a human emits radiation around 400 or so nanometers, a little bit more than a stove? While well, we don't feature them in this section, or this video, it's important to know that sound waves also run specific vibrations and penetrate all of our existence. We can hear some sounds and not others, but that does not mean that the inaudible sounds do not affect us. These and other mechanical waves affect us either positively or negatively. Fields of measurable electromagnetic radiation operate at levels we seldom perceive. Yet they affect us nonetheless. For example, we do have seven or twelve, depending on which system you use, main chakras, although there, there are more than 300 and some chakras in our body. But if you have ever seen a human being with the different chakras, or auric fields written down or drawing on them, you will understand that they are things that we can hear or see. We talk about the ultra radiation, for example, light is divided into gamma rays, X rays, UV light. We live mostly on the visible light spectrum. I hope that you will take my course in chakras in subtle energy fields so you can learn more about this now let's talk about what you're seeing on the picture we're seeing the subtle energy field surrounding a human being subtle energy fields are also called putatic fields or biofields they are considered immeasurable immeasurable although modern science is starting to prove the existence of many of them these fields explain the presence of vital energy, also called chi or prana. This is this comes these terms come from Asian cultures and, as well as sometimes extraordinary phenomena, often labeled psychic, intuitive, or spiritual. So let's talk about these energy fields. These are not separate from the mechanical or measurable fields; rather, they occupy space and run of frequencies that we cannot easily be perceived or seen, except through their effects. They're connected into the body to subtle energy channels, such as the meridians and nadis, and subtle energy bodies, including the chakras, which are able to convert these fast-moving frequencies, chi and prana, into the slower and mechanical fields and forces, electricity, magnetism, and sound, among others. The energy channels and bodies, we are therefore antennae or antenna or towers 
the receive and send information via the fields and transform this information for use by the body. These are untold numbers in subtle fields. An arc field, as you can see here around the individual, are part of the human energy field composed of a set of energy bands that graduate in frequency and color as they move outward from the body. Each auric field opens to different energy planes and energy bodies and also partners with the chakra, thus exchanging information between the worlds outside and inside of the body. The morphological field are fields that are on top of the physical body and that allow exchange between like-minded species and transfer information from one generation to another. The T field or subtle magnetic field, also called thought field, allows the sharing of thoughts and psychic impressions. This is the field, like for example, when you meet somebody for the first time and you get sort of like an icky feeling, right? Or a feeling of likeness of that person. The L field is a subtle electrical field, also called life field, that serves as a blueprint for life. They operate as a template for the developing organism. And up our, the L field is a subpar or subtle electrical field, which is sort of underneath the T field. The universal field, also called the zero point field, consists of photons or units of light that regulate every living thing. Our DNA is made of light and we're surrounded in a field of light, thus the microcosm and macrocosm dance together. I think of the universe, universal field as a template for every biology you know, either that being human, horse, cat, dog, every biology has a different universal field. But there's a template for that. And then, of course, there's a geofield. The geofield is the field between you and the Earth or the planet that you live in. There is a cosmological base field that adds upon all living organisms. Now, the layers of the auric field. Um, scientists are still investigating the existence of the aria, the field that surrounds the entire body for more than a hundred years, adding to knowledge that we already possess from ancestors and other cultures. This field we know now it consists of multiple bands of energy called auric layers or auric fields that encompass the body, connecting us to the outside world. So there are many theories about the auric field but most of them reveal the aura to have a fluid or flowing state to be made of different colors and therefore frequencies to be permeable and penetrable and to be magnetic in nature although it also has electromagnetic properties it is also reflective of the inner sanctum of the human being the condition of it in general as well as its specific layers what this means is that um, we probably you have heard about toxic relationships of people that are vampires that have energy uh, that is like you feel like you're being drained. This is actually happening in this arc field. It reflects the interconnection between the subtle and the physical energies as well as emotional and mental energies. A special form of photography is actually able to take pictures of the arc field. In the 1930s, Russian scientist Simeon Kirlian and his wife Valentina invented a new photographic process that involves directing a high-frequency electrical field at an object. This object pattern, as you can see here, is a luminescence, the org field. This can be captured in film. Contemporary practitioners are using Kirlian photography, among other special methods, to show how the aura responds to different emotional and mental states and even to diagnose illness and other problems. Besides the auric field, there are many other bands of energy that interpenetrate our surrounding of the body. 
These might be called energy bodies or energy planes. For example, when somebody is depressed or has suffered some kind of sexual trauma or is thinking of a suicide, there is an, if you were able to take a clear photography of that person, you will see a shadow, what we call sometimes in New Age or Wiccan um, religion or faith or spiritually, however you want to call it. We call that a shadow self. Why? Because it actually has a shadow. You can see a shadow in Kirlian photography that looks just like the body shape on top of our auric field. Biofeedback works on getting the shadow field, the shadow body out of the auric field, clearing and shielding that person from disease. If a person that is being traumatized or has depression for long periods of time, does not take care of it themselves, this shadow self will attach permanently and start going through what we call the morphological fields, attacking the chakras of the body and creating disease into the nest phase, which is attacking the vital organs. So, as you can see, this is very important research. Besides the auric field, there's so many other bands of energy in many energy planes. Their names vary according to the culture and system, but in general, these fields are stirred steps that link the physical body to higher states. Normally, we have seven auric layers into three planes, each of which represents an aspect of the human being. So I'm going to kind of give you a key to tell you a little bit about the layers that you might have in your body on your auric field. This follows the seven layer auric system that was designed by Barbara and Brennan assessment of the seven major auric fields and the 12 chakra system. For example, The color silver manages the spiritual realms in the spiritual plane. The gold color reflects higher ideas on the Catholic body. As you can see, this individual has very, is very idealistic, has higher ideas. Pastel colors of your choice reholds higher emotions in your celestial body. As you can see, his heart Next to the heart chakra is sort of like a pink color. That means that he's high in, he's a very high emotional person that holds deep feelings. In the aesthetic template, the blueprint for the aesthetic body or physical body, we talk more about being a biological thing, normally shows as a deep blue or indigo. The in the astral plane. The astral plane transforms physical and spiritual energies. It shows us silver. In the astral body, creating bonds will show us pink. So as you can see, this individual is also a person that creates very strong bonds. You know, probably because of the deep emotions. And, the, you know, it's very idealistic. Puts people in a pedestal. You can also do readings on aura, on different, or, uh, you know, clients or, or, or patients, if you wish, using biofeedback or Kirlian photography. Brown shows in the physical plane mostly because it processes the physical world. Yellow, uh, it shows a lot in a mental body. So we can see a lot of yellow in this person in a lot of different areas. No, it, it goes all from his root chakra. Uh, which is below the navel, um, to his uh, sacral chakra, all the way to his throat chakra. Even his throat chakra, as you can see here, is yellow. So he's a very organized person, very perfectionist, with deep, um, 
you know, intellect, probably an intellectual of some sort. And orange remote, reflects the emotions. This person is extremely emotional. Um, as you can see in his third eye chakra or crown chakra, it seems like he has a model, his crown chakra, which is on top of the body, of, the, of his head. If it was the, the, the difference between the crown chakra and the, um, the chakra in between your eyes is, is the position of the same. So, and then light blue normally shows on the etheric body representing shapes of the physical body. Now, let's do, let's go through the different, the 12th chakra auric system. So the first auric field has protection of life, energies, and passion, and it shows us red. The second auric field screens feelings and reflects emotions, and it shows us orange. So this individual, um, really, the crown chakra, he's orange. So he, he's going to scream feelings and reflects a lot of emotion. The third auric field filters ideas and beliefs, and it shows in yellow. As you can see, this this is he does this like even physically in several areas. So we will say, for example, that if this individual, it seems like he's open to these feelings, um, and just he's a deep thinker. But if the color was changing, um, and it wasn't showing yellow and looked like a dark color, then we will see that there's some kind of block on that chakra. The fourth auric field attracts and repeats relationships. And so you don't see this in here. You might see it on the side. So on, on, uh, you see a little green on the, um, right hand side of the picture. And on the top, uh, left of the picture, that means it might be, you know, um, he might be repelling some relationships, but they are not really close to him. And then the fifth auric field attracts, repels, and sends guidance. And we don't see this at all on this reading. On It's supposed to be medium blue color. The sixth auric field, um, and by the way, his fifth auric field, because we don't see blue, um, normally it's located in the throat chakra. Um, so I will say that um, he has a hard time seeking guidance from others and making decisions when it comes down to others. He's pretty good at making decisions about himself and not so much about others. The seventh arc field connects with the spirits and the spirit world and broadcasts spiritual decisions. We don't see this in here. Uh, normally it's the color white. And uh, we, we can see why, because this is a very logical left brain, brain person. Um, uh, even though he goes because of his emotions, that's how he goes in the world. But we don't see that he believes into anything that is not very straightforward and logical. Um, I forgot to mention the six hour field opens to choices and adds decisions. And it normally shows us a ballet color. And so we can see that he's a deep thinker, but we only see a little bit of ballet on the bottom and on the top, uh, on the last body. So I would say that he's a person that um, is a plan, a planner. He likes to plan. He likes feedback. He he, he gets, uh, he might be even an entrepreneur, so an intellectual of some kind that likes to plan, but really doesn't take action on his ideas. The eighth auric field broadcasts karma and absorbs power, and he shows us black, and we don't see anything like this, only maybe on his feet, just a little bit on the bottom of his feet. Um, the, ninth, the ninth auric field connects with others based on soul issues, and, uh, and we can see gold everywhere around him. Um, so, he, like I said, he's a really deep thinker, and he connects with others that way through the world of ideas. The tenth arc field mirrors beliefs as a template for the physical body, and it shows us brown. 
And he does have some of these on his head, on, on top, on the right hand side of the aura, uh, or the auric field. Um, so he, like I said, he's a very physical kind of type of person, very intellectual. And he likes to learn from others, but not so much seek, seek help from others. And then the 11th arc feel commanders forces and normally speak. Um, so he's, he's good at delegating others to do the work, uh, not so much applying those rules to himself. The 12th arc feel finally connects to the heavens and blends human and divine cells, and he shows us as gray. And uh, there's a little tint on the top of his head, on top of the crown chakra, but um, we, we see that this human being has not yet connected to his higher self, may, mainly because he's mainly in the physical world still of ideas. I hope you like um, for me to be talking to you about this arc field shielding and, and clearing. We'll be talking more about chakras, meridians, and channels of the chi. Take my chakra course so you can learn all about your auric field. And, you know, once you know about your chakras and your auric field, you can definitely go on. And uh, this will help you in every area of your life. I'll see you soon.